Let's get up with some brief Spurs news and talk about those final games the Spurs won. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On Spurs. We're here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kansas 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you all back. Hope everybody's having a great work week, and we'll get you through it right here on Locked On Spurs. Yeah, all season is just beginning. Can you believe that? Yeah, a long, long way till the new season. As always, we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Find us on YouTube, Kansas 5 Plus app. Well, so you can get us on Spotify and iTunes. The list goes on and on. Then bring in our guest, Raul Dominguez of the AP Sports. We're going to be discussing those final Spurs games slash wins to close the season. And then I'll talk about you guys, the Locked On Spurs fans, in the comments. But first, uh, some quick Spurs news. Uh, Oz makers have closed Betty for the Rookie of the Year award. Basically, they call it OTB, off, off the books. In other words, you can't bet on it anymore because it's obvious who's going to win. Yeah, Vegas is projecting that Wimby is going to win it. I think that's kind of obvious you know father under yeah you know everybody knows but yeah it looks like uh Wimby at least according to Vegas odds makers are going to win it I think we all know that he's going to win it he finished the uh, season with three straight rookie of the month awards so credit to him yeah but it's in the bag it's his he should be winning it uh once they announce it so yeah unfortunately you can't bet on it it's kind of a lock for Wimby to get that also in other Spurs news for those y'all ever wondering about those recent Wimby AI concept sneakers, you know, you've seen it. They look like white with a big air pocket on there. They look very futuristic. Well, a uh, foot doctor discussed the practicality of that type of shoe, that Wimby shoe, and whether or not it would work in real world. Well, apparently to him, well, according to him, I should say, it would not. That First of all, he did give credit to the shoe, saying that it would fit Wimby's width of his foot, but the spacing of the toe area work and also because it's laceless, uh, that the ankle support, you know, the, the top of the foot would not get that much support. But it's, it is an interesting concept. Nevertheless, you can check out that chat on kens5.com slash Spurs. And also in other Spurs news, Wimby, Wimby, Wimby again. Yes, the NBA announced its top five most viewed plays and the top 10 most viewed players on NBA. NBA social and digital media platforms, and lo and behold, Wimby is ranked right up there. Let's start off with uh, the top viewed plays. It was the dunk on Boston Celtics slash Derek White. Uh, that dunk uh, actually ranks number two on the uh, list of top five most viewed plays this past regular season, and uh, he is also 10. He ranked number three with 1.3 billion views of people just looking for him. By the way, that dunk he had on the Celtics back on December 31, 247 million views. So, yeah, it's Wimby, Wimby, Wimby's world. We're just living in it. All right, coming up next, we have our old Dominguez of the AP Sports. We're going to be discussing those last games of the Spurs, the wins that they had, what to make of it. You know, you know, should we really put some stock into that? We're going to be discussing that. And that's next right here on Locked on Spurs. I want to talk about Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be like just right around the corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Hey, let's talk about the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. Has room up to eight and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability. 284 horsepower, up to 6,000 pounds of towing. When adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Hey, what about the 2024 Nissan Rogue? It's perfect for city drives, great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call in for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone, Google Assistant Maps, uh, Google Maps, I should say, Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Hey, take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. So I've been told I'm a competitive uh, person. I don't know if that's true. Do you think it's true? Well, no, for those of you who knew me, I, I know me. I should know. But, well, okay. Well, sometimes I do have a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play not one 
or one on one, I should say, but against hundreds of millions of other players, monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring in big money. But the best part, you're messing with friends. You're having fun with them. You can charge them rent on some iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. You can also rob them of their vaults and for those riches for yourself. And they got leaderboards that show you who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just the competitive side that you'll love about it, and I certainly do. But you can up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments and urge earn huge awards. So get in on the action. Join your friends. Go download Monopoly Go right now. Again, that's Monopoly Go. Go download it right now. Free on the App Store or Google Play. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from Cybertron Spring. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Raul Dominguez. He's with the AP Sports. You know, he, he thought the season was over and he was getting rid of me, but he, he didn't. You know, he did. I actually warned him at the workroom. I said, hey, I'm going to bother you. This week he's like, okay, I guess. So no, never involved. <laughs> never involved. <laughs> he is back, everybody. Once again, follow him on X at Dominguez Cinco. By the way, stay tuned. He's gonna show off a cool Wimby card that he recently got. And um, yeah, it's gonna make a lot of people jealous because I'm gonna go find it and take it from him now. So anyway, Raul, off season is here. Uh still young. Spurs fans are still looking back at the final stretch, weeks, months, couple months. Of the Spurs season, saying like, "Hey, look at that! You know, they 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 won a few games. They took the Sixers to double overtime. They beat the defending champs. They beat Memphis. And wow, they're playing really well. And yes, they were playing really well. But about those wins, Raul, uh, if we dig deeper, you know, some may say, okay, sure, Spurs, you won, but let's look at those wins." Denver said you guys that they didn't take the Spurs seriously. I mean, they openly admitted it, saying, Yeah, we just slept on these guys. You beat a Memphis team that was depleted. You you took a Sixers team, although the Spurs lost, but you know, they didn't have Joel and B. You beat Utah, you know, it's not the cream of the crop. How much stock should we take in those wins to end out the season? Um, I think you should take pretty good stock. I mean, okay. Yeah, you know, they, they, those other teams, you know, had some issues. I, I don't think Denver so much slept on them. I think Denver just sort of figured, ah, oh, you know, we'll, we'll come back when, when we'll beat them. You know, the, mm-hmm. we can do this. Uh, almost like the old Spurs would first half yeah. they tank, and then the third quarter they just kill everybody. Um, I think maybe it was a little bit, little bit of that with Denver. But uh, the reason why I say maybe take a little bit more stock in these wins is, is for two reasons. One, I mean, they were without everybody. I mean, aside from Victor, um, you know, pretty much mm-hmm. everyone, the big, you know, I think they were at one point, I think it was uh, five of their no. top seven scorers, yeah. I think, were out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, you know, Victor was out there playing well, you know, and, and so the team that they beat, they beat New York when Jalen Brunson was having just an incredible game, uh, still beat them. Um mm-hmm. You know, they, they came back and they beat Phoenix after getting throttled, throttled by them, mm-hmm. uh, beat Denver. Denver, regardless of what they say, uh, you know, that's a championship caliber team, obviously, because they won the championship yeah. last year. Uh, they wanted the number one seed. So I don't know if they were so much slept on them. I, I think maybe uh, Spurs caught them a little off guard. I think they weren't mm-hmm. expecting the Spurs to come out that strong. Uh, and, and uh, you know, one, take stock one because everyone they're missing it, two, because early in the season, they would have lost that game, the Denver game. Oh, yeah. Denver started coming back. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that you've seen them, uh, you know, unfortunately we've seen them where, you know, late game situation where they have a big lead or, or they have mm-hmm. a lead late and then they blow it just with, you know, just unforced errors, you know, turnovers, mm-hmm. you know, um, missed opportunities, you know, bad shots, you know, running to the rim and, you know, not knowing what to do. And next thing you know, the team's heading the other way for a fast break. Um, so so that that's why I think you should – take a little bit more stock in what they did because they, they beat some really good teams who were fighting for playoff positioning. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, they were able to hold these leads against quality teams, even without, you know, Devin, Jeremy, mm-hmm. uh, Keldon, uh, for much right. of it. Um, you know, I'm trying to remember who else was out. Chetty was out for a while. Osmond, yeah. Osmond was um, out, Malachi yeah. was out this last game. So, uh, you know, I, I think you should take stock because I, I think what the, the grit that they showed is what I thought – was going to be more of what they were going to be like this season. 
because uh, that's what they showed last season. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, you know, it just they weren't able to show it consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, but here down the stretch, they did, and I, I, it's, it's a good sign. It's, it's a really good sign for the Spurs. Yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to rain on the parade, everybody. I'm not. You know, I know it was a down season. Any ray of hope uh, was going to be highlighted, and, and I get it. But when you look back, you're like, man, you know, the Spurs, you, you know, wish wish they would have been – I would have loved to see them at full power, you know, taking on some of those teams that they beat down the stretch. Full power Den at versus Denver. Full power versus uh, maybe uh, Philadelphia. I think versus Philadelphia they had a couple guys out. So – just to see what could have been, you know, as a matter of fact, I kind of brought that up with Trey Jones at the uh, end of season chat. And um, I asked him, Oh, well, you know, you guys played pretty well. You know, what, what will be your, what will your view on this? What were your thoughts on this heading into the off season, the next season? What do you think the fans saw? And he said that he felt that the Spurs gave the fans a sneak peek at what could have been or what could be in just a few months. Now, you know, I actually did some homework, everybody. I know, shocker, everybody. But uh, to show just how much the improvement was, Raul, I looked at pre-All-Star and then post-All-Star -All break. Okay, so pre-All-Star break, the Spurs defensive rating was 117.5, okay? After 111.8. So their defense got a little better. This is interesting. So you were talking about holding on to leads. So, again, pre- and post-All-Star break, uh, the Spurs averaged 6.9 points in clutch situations, so basically with the, the leads, uh, you know, in there, at a 2.5 plus minus differential. Now, after the All Star break, they were scoring more, 9.3 uh, points in clutch situations and a 0 0.8 plus minus. So right there, you're seeing the trends getting a lot better uh, for them, you know, in in closing out games or at least holding on to games, clutch situations, and then their defense got better. I mean, perhaps, you know, just some eye test could have figured that out too. But for me, Raul, that was kind of the biggest thing is that they were working on the little things. And mm -hmm. um, it's the number show, Raul. Yeah, and that's one thing that um, they all talked about. And uh, Pop mentioned it as well. Just uh, he sort of challenged them, you know, hey, you know, we're near the bottom of mm -hmm. all these stats. Uh, he said he talked to them after, the, you know, around the All-Star game, All-Star break. We're at the bottom. Let's see what we can do the rest of the way. And they improved. I mean, I think since uh, – I think after the um, – what was it? After the rodeo road trip, um, they were 11 and 12, you know. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. obviously a sign of progress. But, um, you know, they, they improved dramatically, you know. It's kind of, I mm -hmm. think, what everyone kind of expected or maybe hoped for. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not sure why it took them a little while. Devin had pointed out, hey, you know, it's not easy getting used to playing a guy that's seven seven foot five. So maybe that had, yeah. I'm sure that had a lot to do with it as well. But I think they just needed to mesh. Um, and I think when when some of the other guys went down, I think they sort of relied even more on on Victor. Mm -hmm. And Victor's a heck of a playmaker. You know, mm -hmm. I would love to see him next season. Maybe be uh, for them to run a little bit more of the offense through him. Because uh, I mean, how many time, how many great passes do you have to Sandro for dunks and for layups? I know, and, you know, finding all these guys. So, you know, it'd be nice to to, to have Victor, sort of, or the offense run through Victor, yeah, because he's again he's such a dynamic playmaker, you know, and he yeah. obviously draws a lot of attention. So he's either going to score or you know find an open teammate. So that I would I think that that helped him a lot was was they were having to focus even more on Victor as yeah, far as exactly. the Spurs were. For his offense, was yeah, yeah, to have more. yeah, and especially when the 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 other power players were out. You mentioned Vassell, Sohan, and Johnson, Malachi. They were done. It was all Victor, and the Spurs really got a little bit of groove there, and really were hanging in games or beating teams as we saw to close the season. Now, in the sample size, the beginning of March to the end of the season, so about a two month sample size. This is this is crazy. You know what you hear, but do you want to hear about development? This is it right here. So in that sample size of two months from March 1 to the end of the Spurs season, the Spurs ranked first in rebounds, 46.8 per game, second in assists, 30.3, first in blocks. Should have just said Wimby first in blocks there, but still 6.7 blocks per game. They ranked seventh in clutch situation point time. So basically it's, it's just scoring in clutch situations at 9.9 .9 per clutch situation. 
fourth in contested shots. Again, Wimby there. Mm-hmm. And this one is very really interesting. They were 11th in fast break points at 16.0. Um, so they were really getting out there and running. So there is your ray of hope right there, everybody, that everything was coming together. Mm-hmm. Bro, didn't one of the players say, like, they wish the season started now because it could be a different outcome right now? Uh, I think I believe Devin said that. So Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and the other good thing is just their, their chemistry. I mean, um, mm-hmm. I, I think having those guys on the bench – cheering on their teammates. I think that helped them bond even more. You know, they, they mm-hmm. were able to, you know, these guys yeah. have been cheering for them all season. And now they were getting the chance to cheer for, you know, Sandro and Devante and, you know, and and how happy they were for, for Devante and Sandro. I think it, I think mm-hmm. it bonded them um, even more. Uh, one thing though, I, um, from the beginning of the season until now, like I, I wish Sandro had played more just cause he's such a, yeah, he's such a great playmaker. He's such a smart player. It would have been fun to see him and Victor sort of grow together a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, Mamu's uh, future in San Antonio is still kind of up in the air. You know, Popovich did say that they're going to talk about his situ- uh, Mamu's situation moving yeah. forward. He has Wimby's vote. Wimby's advocating for him. And that is going to weigh a lot moving forward. But we'll see what happens with him. But yeah, again, everybody, I'm not trying to rain the parade again at all. But when you look at the wins, you got to factor in, you know, the timing, you know, whatnot. Now, like, you know, Denver loss. I mean, Denver losing to the Spurs, I should say. That's on them, basically. I mean, Raul, you and I were kind of like, you know, the Spurs beat the Nuggets. I was expecting them, the Denver Nuggets, to come in and just wipe them off the floor because knowing the one seed was on the uh, line. They didn't. Spurs uh, took part in that. And sure, maybe Denver didn't come out with full force. But I guess the silver lining of that is that the Spurs capitalized on that. You look yeah. at early season 2023 Spurs, perhaps they don't do that. Mm. If, you know, you, you know, you fast forward to the end of the season, we saw they did that. So I guess that goes to pop what he always says about showing grit and grunt role. Yeah. And the other thing I think um, that Denver game showed us is you don't want to get Victor mad because he was getting bullied and pushed around, especially when, when Aaron Gordon yeah. knocked him down he and then, and I had never seen him uh, that mm-hmm. demonstrative. Of course, he wound up getting a, a technical, was his first real technical all season. Yeah. His other technical, I believe, was when he threw the, the ball in the stands or something. Yeah, or no, the ball out. it was yeah. when he, he, he threw the ball on the court and he, he missed it. And so it went straight up. So they had to call a technical on him. So this was his first real technical where he was, you know, getting in a, in a rest face. And I was watching him all mm-hmm. game. And he was getting in the, the, you know, he was getting after the refs pretty much throughout the game. So I think eventually they're like, hey, you know, I, I got to give you a tech. Um, but he was really upset. He, he, they got him mad. They got the Spurs mad, sort of riled them up. Cause after, yeah. after the tech is when they really came on, the Spurs really came on, came on. So, uh, that's another promising sign to, to know that Victor has that kind of fight, you know, where mm-hmm. it's not about him just getting mad and, you know, sulking or, you know, uh, playing out of control. Like that, that focused him even more and, mm-hmm. uh, really motivated his teammates. Yeah, and sure, okay, maybe Detroit, you know, Detroit, and you know, but they're losing on purpose, but you know, still, the Spurs took advantage of that and got the W to close uh, the season. You know, you see the anomaly in in the last few games was that Thunder game, and now the Thunder they just obliterated San Antonio. I think the final score is one twenty seven eighty nine. The Spurs are down as much as forty plus points in that mm-hmm. game. And for me, Raul, that's when I when, when I thought about this topic. I thought, like, well, that isn't that kind of the outlier. Isn't that game versus OKC saying like, well, maybe the Spurs aren't there yet. I think if they had either beat OKC in OKC or at least took them, you know, to the bitter end, I would have said, okay, that's a sign. Or was that just a situation, Raul, of the OKC Thunder just being the number one seed in the playoffs that they are in the West? Probably a little bit of both. Uh, You know, Wemby didn't play in that game, so it's, it's, you know, it's tough to Mm – you know, without Wimby, I'm, especially mm-hmm. with Oklahoma City, has got such a great team. They're so deep, um, yeah. and I think they're I think they're pretty healthy as well. So I, I can't I don't think it, mm-hmm. uh, I can't think of anyone uh, in the key players that is out. So um, yeah, you know they're they're just but they're just a great team and they're deep. Yeah, they are. And then the scary part is they're going to get even uh, even deeper because they I think uh, they have even more picks than than the Spurs yeah. in the next. I think it's mm-hmm. five years. I think. Yeah. So, um, but but I think it was a combination of both. I, I think it was 
just Oklahoma City just being a great team and 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 two the Spurs sure, were yeah. just you know, you know they were short handed. No Wimby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the Wimby effect right there. You don't have Wimby in the court. Situations like that happen and they did happen for the Spurs. But you do you know one thing I liked about the exit interviews that we we were at uh, Raul was that all the players seemed pretty excited. I think mm-hmm. Uh, Devin said that he wishes the season was a week from this, from that point of exit uh, interviews. Popovich said that, you know, hey, give me a week off and then we'll, we'll do this again. Uh, mm. So they seem to be excited, which kind of leads to this question roll based on what how they played to close the season. Man, it feels like they might run it back. Mm. It, it's, it'll be interesting because they, they closed pretty strong last year as well, if I, if I remember correctly, yeah. or, you know, or, or they were starting to gain some momentum last year. So that's why, I, you know, I didn't think that they would make the playoffs, but I thought they'd maybe battle for a play in spot. Um, mm-hmm. So I was a little surprised that they almost, you know, set the, uh, mm-hmm. the uh, dubious record of yeah. most losses, you know, uh, if it wasn't for this late run, they would have, they would have set it, but um, it'll be, but the one thing I think that will help is last year, they were still kind of up in the air you know, mm-hmm. still hoping they were hoping to get the number one pick. So now they have Wemby, uh, you know, Devin's grown, uh, Jeremy's grown, uh, mm-hmm. Trey's shown exactly what he could do. Yeah. Um, you know, Keldon, Keldon is the heart and soul of this team to me. Um, so I, I think because they have their core, I think that's really going to help them grow. And the, the one other thing that uh, you're talking about the exit interviews I thought was interesting was Devin said he's already talked to, to Victor about, hey, you know, we need to get together this summer. And let's work more on on you yeah. know uh, our, our chemistry on on our, our time on the court. So um, you know, and Devin Devin puts in a lot of work. I don't people I don't he think does. people realize how hard that that young man works. So um, it's gonna you know I know Wimby's got the Olympics, but I'm sure once the Olympics are done, he's probably maybe take two days off, knowing Victor, and then come mm-hmm. right back. But I'm sure mm-hmm. that him and Devin are gonna be in the the gym just you know working and working yeah. and working so yeah so that that's going to be a, that'll be good for them as well yeah and uh, you were there when i was talking to uh trey jones he said uh t- to me when i asked him about the off season and whatnot he said a lot of the guys are going to stay in san antonio mm-hmm. so in the off season and that's good because we saw them do that last summer a lot mm-hmm. of you know they were out of, i think they're at utsa gym and they were just running uh as much as they can so mm-hmm. hopefully that'll duplicate it and that will that chemistry that they found towards the end of the season will carry over now it sounds like pop will be back sounds mm-hmm. like it you know he all but admitted it that he'll be back so uh there was some cohesiveness there on the coaching uh sidelines so again another season with pop that'll help this team but based on how you saw the the spurs close the season man it's it's hard for me to imagine raul this team doing another 20 win season it's hard for me i can't see that happening again no, I, I think um, on an earlier show with you, I'd said I predicted 30 wins next year. So yeah. I'm, I'm still sticking with that because they won, uh, what is it, uh, 22? 22, uh, yeah. Yeah, 22 this season. Uh, you know, it's going to be easy for them to pick up eight more wins, I, I think, uh, mm-hmm. especially, you know, with the with the pick that they're going to get. Should be mm-hmm. a pretty high pick. Maybe two two picks. Maybe. Uh, you know, yeah. if they get Toronto's, uh, maybe Toronto at number seven, maybe, or Toronto's pick at number seven because yeah. – the Raptors pick is top six protected. So if it falls to seven, then it's, it belongs to the Spurs. Uh, maybe mm. they, maybe they get two good players. Maybe they, they package that to, to move up. If there's someone in particular yeah. that they want, you know, um, and I still think they're going to add somebody, you know, as far as maybe a, a, a veteran free agent or maybe a trade. Yeah. Um, but, but they're going to have a much better team, uh, you know, uh, one because of the draft pick two because of the possible trade and free agency. But the biggest thing I think is just the fact that that, that they um, ha- are developing. Um, again, most of these kids should still be young men; should be in mm-hmm. college. Yeah, they um, should and, be. Yeah, and, and you can you can see them developing. You know, and, and they're they're starting to figure it out. They're starting to to uh, know exactly. You know what pops? We're talking about. It's got to be forty eight minutes. It's got to be defense uh, predicated. You know, they're they're, mm-hmm. they're starting to, to actually understand that a little better. I think. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they were getting it too. One thing that just really for me was a thorn on their side for all season with turnovers. I mean, to the bitter mm-hmm. end, that was still an issue that could be the, the chemistry. Hopefully, they can clean that up. But the Spurs were looking good, and uh, to close the season, hopefully, they'll carry that over. Although Trey Jones did, I you know, I went back and listened to what he had to say to me. My question, you know, it's like he stuck it in there. I don't know if you caught this role. 
He talked about the positive stuff, but he goes, but we still got to remember we're still a young team. Mm-hmm. He's talking about going into the next season. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they are, but, man, I think that label of majority of this team being a young team has got to go because Ray's a veteran now, technically. Mm-hmm. Vassell is, yeah. Keldon is, Jeremy is. Uh, maybe give a little bit more uh, slack for Wimby because it'll be just a sophomore season. Mm-hmm. We'll see how he adjusts to now teams defending him now because you know they're going to come at him now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah, for me, that label of young teams has got to go already. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're still going to be a young team next year, especially with, you know, if they get wind up, especially with two mm-hmm. draft picks, it'll probably be like an 18 or a 19 year old they draft. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, they're, they're the end of their roster is going to have a little bit more, uh, another mm-hmm. year experience, you know. Devin, you know, Devin's um, going to have played a little bit more. He's bothered mm-hmm. by some injuries in his previous year, so now he's starting to play more. Uh, but one thing, though, when you mentioned as far as uh, with Wemby, um, I'm going to be really interested to see what Victor does offensively next year because he talked about in the exit interview about how there was things that he wanted to work on, but he says you can't really work on them during the season. He says you need to work on those things in the offseason. So I'm thinking who knows what he's going to add offensively. Would love to see him add a bank shot, you know. Uh, Me too. People have talked about a sky hook, you know, which would yep. be just crazy. Um, but he's he's obviously has something in mind as far as mm-hmm. adding to his offensive game. Um, yeah. and, and so it's it's as pol- as polished as he is now. Um, can you just imagine what he's going to be like next season? I can't. I can't. I can't imagine it. You know, if I did, if I didn't have to talk to him in the offseason, I would tell him to add in the Raul Dominguez step back three. I think it's <laughs> devastating. Nobody can stop the Raul Dominguez step back three. It, that's, you know, a Mike, get, get, that's a Mike Finger step back three. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to get into the lab with uh, Wimby during the offseason. Meet, meet him in France. Go go work on his game mm-hmm. with him there, Raul. He is Raul Dominguez of uh, ap sports uh yeah you see how that says ap on those new those news updates or those write-ups you see that's him right there make sure to follow him on x at raul i'm sorry at dominguez cinco hey when we get back uh we're going to be discussing you guys and yes uh, raul will give you a heads up a lot about wimby yes you guys are leaving a lot of comments on the youtube page we'll talk about that that's next right here on locked on spurs Hey, I want to talk about eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. That's the formula for winning championships, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, they got that. Roof racks, got that too. Need exhaust kits? Yep. How about LED headlights? They got that as well, and so much more. So whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're not just burning rubber, or you're not going to be burning rubber. You're going to be burning rubber and so much saving of your cash. So, yeah, keep that in your pocket. Well, all the parts that you need at the prices you want is easy to take your car to the MVP level and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Once again, go to ebaymotors.com. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. I want to talk to you about Muslingers drive through Coffee. Go there right now, San Antonio, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive, 281 to 1604 area. Go get yourself a great, uh, well, if you need a latte, they got that. You need dairy alternative drinks, they got that. What about a cold brew? They got that. What about their signature drink, the Muslinger Coffee, to get you introduced into the world of coffee? They got that, too. They also have mini donuts, and I hear they sell out pretty fast. 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive, open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And they got a great menu. It's very extensive, friendly staff. They have a, uh, well, they're just proud to be a local sponsor of Lockdown Spurs and a proud community member of San Antonio serving San Antonio the best drinks around. Speaking of the drinks, they have uh, their uh, their uh, their energy line. So basically, it's pretty much their lightning bolt series. Now, for those of y'all have been there, they usually make them with Red Bull. Well, now they're going to be doing it with the Lotus Energy. That's going to be the default. That's seven power plant extracts uh, that is going to fuel you throughout your day. Now, look, they'll still have Red Bull available, but uh, if you need to have a drink, one of the Red Bull, well, they're infused Lightning Bolt series. Uh, yeah, they got that as well. 
all delicious. But again, the default will be Lotus Energy 7 Power Plant Extracts. But if you want the Red Bull, just tell them. They'll put it in there. They'll keep Those drinks will keep you charged up throughout your whole day. 24-0-4000 Oaks Drive. Go there right now. San Antonio open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Must Lingers drive through Coffee, your place that you want to go for the best drinks in San Antonio. Go there right now because life is too short for bland coffee. And we're back on Lockdown Spurs where Raul Dominguez, the meanest three-point shooter in San Antonio. Don't crowd his space. He just don't knock it down on your face. Make sure to follow him on X at Dominguez Cinco. Is that true? Is that here you got the meanest three-point shot? You have a silky smooth shot from Raul Dominguez? No, that's that's Mike Finger. You got the wrong <laughs> reporter. I, I used to play with against Mike in the UIW gym. And man, that guy could shoot. He couldn't rebound, but he could shoot. <laughs> Shots fired, everybody. All right, follow him on X at Dominguez Cinco. Hey, it's your turn, everybody. You guys are leaving a lot of comments on the Lockdown Spurs YouTube page. Wish we could talk, get them all down, and address them all. We just can't. So we're going to just pick two. So the first one is Shocker, Wimby, Wimby, Wimby. And this one's, uh, by the way, you and I will appreciate the, this person's uh, username. Jedi Tricks, probably. Good, good, good name there. He says, yo... Wemba, oh, Wemby, I guess he meant, is getting DPOI relax. Hate to break the news to you, Jedi Tricks. I uh, wish you could use a mind trick on the voters. You know, that'd be awesome. But it looks like Wemby's probably not going to get that award, is he, uh, Raul? You know, it doesn't look like it. He, he he should get it. He deserves it. He deserves uh, it, yes. But um, it, the voting is always so weird. You know, I, I think they, they try and like have these um, unofficial, you know, these unofficial rules or whatever, you know, like, oh, you know, it's got to go to a player that's, you know, on a winning team or, or this or that. Um, I, I think that's going to hurt them, you know, obviously with the Spurs record and Minnesota mm-hmm. doing so well. Uh, but somebody pointed out something great. It's like, you know, you know, there, that sort of unofficial, you know, um, rule, you know, you got to vote for the the, play, the best mm-hmm. defensive player, you know, or a defensive player, uh, you know, that's on a, a good team or a winning team. Tim never won defensive player of the year. And he was always on winning teams, you know, 22 straight seasons that they were, you know, uh, playoff bound, you know, I think what 20 or 21 with, with Tim. Um, but anyway, but he never won defensive player of the year. So it, the rules always seem to change. They always kind of seem to maybe fit the, whatever narrative that they, they yeah. want, you know? Um, but, you know, to me, there's no question that, that Victor is yeah. the defensive player of the year, you know, it's, it's not just the stats. It's, it's what he does on the court. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, I think it was Oklahoma City. They had a three-on-one break. Uh, you know, you, you're supposed to attack the basket, you know, and, like, they're playing hot potato near the free throw. Like, no, no, you get it. You know, they kept passing it back and forth, and then they want to pass it to a, for a three-point shot, you know. Uh, I, I I can't remember the last time I've seen anyone do that. You know, usually they'll attack, you know, and either either – get the points, draw a foul, or, you know, at least make an attempt. Like, they didn't even try. Mm-mm. And then you look at so many of these great players, you know, that uh, um, I can't remember. I think it was some some of the players on Golden State. They drive to the rim, and usually they'll put up a shot, you know, but they were, like, continuing to go through the, the lane, through the paint, and weren't yeah. even trying a shot because they knew that Victor was there. And to me, that's why Victor should be def- defensive player of the year. Not, not just the stats, but the way he changes other people's offense. Like, you know, and yeah. then when, when guys – uh, are able to, to, to get a shot up, shot up on him, it's usually something weird, you know, like they'll throw like mm-hmm. a little hook or they'll do a bunch yeah. of fakes. Like, you know, they have to really work for their shots. Yep. Uh, and it's Victor's defense that is making them do that. So to me, that's why Victor should be defensive player of the year because he completely yeah. changes another team's offense. And, you know, all, all due respect to Rudy uh, Gobert, he's a tremendous defensive player. But to me, he, he does not have um, – Mm-mm. Three quarters of the impact that yeah. that uh, Victor does. Yeah, and it's so surprising too because Gobert is a big guy, you know, and he's athletic and mm-hmm. agile, and doesn't have that impact that Wimby does defense. I'm mean, not to say that Vic, I mean, sorry, Rudy doesn't. I mean, he does, but there's there's Rudy Gobert, then there's Wimby. Mm-hmm. There's a whole other level. Mm-hmm. It just levels up there. You know, wasn't that the game against Memphis where it was like a three on one and Wimby was defending the rim? And like every guy was trying to pass it up, like you go, no, you go, no, you go. I, I mean, that just tells you exactly his impact. And for me, what clinches it for me is the on off, the defensive rating on off. You mm-hmm. know, we know what the numbers are. Everybody all know. I don't have to repeat them, but you know the big difference. 
and the Spurs defensive metrics when he's on the court or off the court. It's mm-hmm. astronomical. I mean, it's night and day. And to me, that cinches it. Um, but that, that's a good point, though. Yeah, Timmy, you never want it, but yet he was always deep playoff pushes, winning titles, but mm-hmm. never, ever, ever wanted it. Somebody told me that when I brought their attention, I said, you know, the, the, Tim Duncan never wanted DPOY. And know what their reaction was? Was I just thought he did. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that that was kind of the sentiment through when when Timmy was playing was just oh I just thought he did because he was so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it, it was odd to me because I didn't even realize that until after uh, yeah. his career was over, and then someone pointed that out, and I was just like, "Man, you're right. He never won it." And yeah, you know, Tim Tim was the same way. Tim was a great defensive player. You know, changed mm-hmm. uh, you know what teams did offensively, and yet he never won it. And I never quite understood why he never wanted absolutely all right thank you for that comment there jedi tricks we appreciate it the next one up from william shapiro he says shooters meaning you reacting to the spurs needing shooters demar derozan free agent bring him back mm-hmm. what are your thoughts about it? what about a reunion in san antonio again raul demar derozan wearing silver or black again something tells me i don't think he'd be down for it considering the state of his nba career stage but uh you know Kind of would address shooting knees, at least in the mid range. Mm, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, mid range. He's not much. Well, yeah, Demar, Demar could be a three point shooter, but that's not his strength. I, I think he knows what his strength is, so he he, he prefers the mid range game. But um, I, I love Demar. I think Demar is a great player, but even more so than a great player, he's a great person. You know, yes. uh, mm-hmm. just tremendous uh, person. You know, great teammate. So if, if they were to bring him back, that that'd be amazing. Um, if, if they could, if they can, I, I would say I would certainly do it. But mm-hmm. I think you have to, to think about um, kind of how we would fit, you know, the, the salary cap and what they'd yeah. have to spend from. Um, mm-hmm. I think DeMar would, might come down here, even though they're still kind of, you know, not rebuilding, quite yeah. contending for a title. Um, you know, he went to Chicago thinking he could contend for a title there. And, yeah, you know, it hasn't worked out, you know. And I know he loves San Antonio. I know he loves Pop. Mm-hmm. I know he loves our organization, so you know there, there's an outside chance. I, I wouldn't think so, but um, I, I think he'd help them out with their mid-range shooting. His playmaking w- would be a tremendous help to the entire mm-hmm. team, especially Victor, and then just his, his veteran leadership. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he's he's a veteran, but he's someone that, that gets along with all the the young players and mentors yeah. them. He's their friend, and, and I, I think he'd be a big boost to the locker room as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So you know, if they were to bring him in, I, I, that would be. Tremendous, you know, Demar and Lonnie are the two guys that I'd like to see yeah. back. You know, um, I think Lonnie knows what his role is; would be to come off the bench and yeah. maybe not even play some games. I, I think he'd be okay yeah. with that. But um, and I think Lonnie would do the same thing. He he he's a tremendous teammate, locker room presence. Um, but you know, who knows what's what's going to happen in the offseason? I think they yeah. they got some tough decisions. You know, uh, Chetty's an unrestricted free agent. Yeah, um, I hate to say it, but. Well, I don't, we- I don't yeah. know. I don't think Chetty's going to be back. Me neither. I, yeah. Um, I think they'd like to have him back, but I think as far as the with the salary cap and who they got coming in, I think they're going to try and uh, spend that money elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, Mamu, you know, he's a restricted free yeah. agent. I think he'll be back. Uh, Devante, uh, I don't know. I'm 50 50. I would obviously like for him to come back. Me too. I know first fan yeah. for him to come back, but I think uh, with the depth that they have, I think that's one spot where. I think they would be okay with with mm-hmm. him going somewhere else. Well, it's like the commenter said, uh, Shapiro right now says shooters. That's what Devonte is. He's a guy. that's a gunner, and he can yeah. knock him down. We saw that to close the season. Yeah, you know, he can score. He dropped like twenty points in one game, uh, and that's coming off you know cold. You know, not really getting much burn throughout the season. Mm-hmm. So I would love to see him come. As far as Demar is concerned. Yeah, I too. I, love, I loved how he was with you and me and the rest of the mm-hmm. media. I mean, just really open and willing to talk. Mm-hmm. Win or lose, was always in front of the camera. Really nice. Didn't really give you snarky answers if you, you know, asked what you considered a dumb question. You know, in my opinion, there's no dumb questions in conferences. <laughs> but um, there was yeah. that. What's I, was that? Gonna, I was just going to say, then even when he's with Chicago now, it's like, um, you know, a lot of times when we go to the, the opposing locker rooms, you got to wait for a little yeah. while for the for the star or whatever to go yeah. shower or do whatever. But uh, Damar and, and, and Kawhi uh, are both guys who just like, as soon as you're in, he's like, you know, Hey, do you need to come talk? You know, come on, you know, yeah. like, yeah. he, like he calls us over 
and, yeah. um, you know, still in uniform or, or whatever mm-hmm. that they're in. Um, they talk and they answer every single question that is asked of them. You yeah. know, they're, they're laughing. They're, you know, well, well, DeMar's laughing this morning. Kawhi is just yeah. sort of just, you know, there. being quiet. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, just there. but they answer all the questions. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but yeah. what you were saying, like DeMar's, he's still that way with Chicago. You know, he's still yeah. a gracious, gracious mm-hmm. person. Yeah, he is. Uh, and I miss that about him, just talking to him. I mean, remember, everybody, you know, everybody talked about San Antonio being a small market. You know, athletes can't do much here. Well, before Louis Vuitton was here, thanks to Wimby, it was DeMar DeRozan that started his clothing line in mm-hmm. San Antonio. Not in Los Angeles, where he's from, or California he's from. Nope, in San Antonio. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, mid range. I think, I think the Spurs just need more three point shooting, though. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is for me. You know, no, I mean, I know Demar made it very clear in his time in San Antonio. He told it to you and me, everybody. Hey, I can make threes. I just choose not to. <laughs> I felt like that Seinfeld episode. I want to race, but I just don't want to race. You know, I can beat you in a race, and I want to race, but. Yeah, I, I, Demar would be back. He f- checks all the boxes: veteran check, you know, All Star check, locker room presence check, familiar mm-hmm. with Pop and the system check, integrate well with a young squad as he proven before check. Mm-hmm. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, but I think it comes down to finances. Does Demar want to come to a rebuilding situation, or does he still want to chase the ring and the titles? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that ultimately is gonna push into uh, over the other uh, ways there, but thank you uh, there for those comments. We appreciate it. Raul, I know it is the off season Spurs are on a long hiatus till the next season. So what are you going to be doing during the break? I know we got Wimby in France. What else? That's about it. You know, just sort of keeping an eye on them and, and um, you know, if any sort of major events come in to San Antonio, uh, mm-hmm. but other than that, you know, just kind of just, you uh, I guess recharging the batteries, I guess so. Not me, Ro. I have to keep on going for a while longer. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm the I'm, I'm like the last like now. Fish is another uh, person. These of you and me on Ken's. He and I would tackle Spurs covers together. He left, mm-hmm. so it's just all me now. So I can't <laughs> divvy up the work. By the way, Ro, I don't know if you ever noticed this. Sometimes I ask questions during conversations, but I don't. Not because I don't want to be a participant. It's because I start my I see start seeing my workload piling up. Mm. And I'm like, oh God. And I'm like, if I ask something and then Ken's gonna hear it, I'm like, well, what about that? And they're like, just chill. I got it. So I'm a, I'm a, yeah. I'm a lone wolf at Ken's mm. on the Spurs coverage side. But if you need all sports, everything, you want to go to Raul, including NBA and Spurs and whatever sports, whether local, national, he has you covered. You can make sure to follow him on X at Dominguez Cinco. Raul, you have a card you want to show off, don't you? I was going to show it to you, so hopefully I do it right on the oh, camera. So look at that, everybody. So it's the Slender Man. The Wimby Slender Man card. That is nice. That is that like a stack of them, or just the it's one? just one? They uh, the collector I bought it from, you know, put it in the uh, the hard cover. So that's one of the it's reasons flat, why yeah. I purchased it. So, but I, I just thought it was a, a great card. I was uh, I, I used to be a big card collector. Uh, mm-hmm. Not so much anymore, but I always like it when there's something unusual. And, and to me, this was just yeah. a, a great card. You know, not only a, ro- a rookie card, but you know, Victor dressed as Slender Man, so yeah, uh, had to get this because it's just how unique it is. That is cool. That is cool. Yeah. Um, too bad we can't get autographs though. That's that's a shame. <laughs> that's a shame. I'll look away, Raul. If you try, mm-hmm. I won't say. I won't tattle tell. I'm just kidding. Raul, I can do that, Spurs. You won't do that. Um, by the way, uh, little nerd time. Did you see episode five of X Men '97? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it. I'm hey. still, I'm still processing the the previous episode. That's well, you're not ready. You're an ex. You're, you're my. You're gonna be texting me something. You're gonna be mm-hmm. whatever. You're gonna be what did I just watch? Mm-hmm. You're not ready for it. So I'm gonna leave that on the cliffhanger for Raul. There, can't wait to get his reaction when he sees '97. By the way, I'm glad you saw. Say Manos on uh, Netflix. It was a great show. I, I'm great, hoping right? there's another one coming. So that was a great, 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 great action. Good chemistry. Good. Everybody go to Netflix. Look for Say Manos. S E I S Manos M A N O S. It's an anime that's on Netflix. Really, really good. Uh, Raul loved it. I guarantee y'all will love it too. There's your nerd segment. It's the off season, everybody. I gotta fill time. All right, give me a break here. All right, again, he is Raul Dominguez of the AP Sports.
Be sure to follow my next at Dominguez Cinco. Hey, we'll be back tomorrow. More Spurs talk. Yeah, we're still going here. Lockdown Spurs, even though the season is over. Just a few more weeks, and then I'll put the brakes on it. So we're going to be bringing in a fan. Yes, we're going to have a fan episode. Now, we touched yesterday's show was what the French fans had to say. But what about San Antonio, Texas fans had to say about Wimby's rookie year and the Spurs' 23-24 uh, season? That's for tomorrow's show. So for Raul Dominguez, the best three-point shooter in San Antonio, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.